suddenly the OCD side came back and it like something kind of snapped in my brain and I just had a complete like mental breakdown and I was at home all the time like my dad had to stay home from work to to be with me when my mum couldn't be there because I just couldn't function I was just like constantly crying and just a complete like wreck I couldn't function I then learned that I'm not crazy mm -hmm. um, and that what I'm experiencing is something that loads of other people have experienced and it's not actually me as a person and it's this thing that's happening that, that has developed. Really try and push yourself to talk to someone without worrying what they'll think. I mean, I had bad anxiety all through, I guess like forever really, but then it got really bad when I was maybe like 11. Mm -hmm. And um, to a point where like, I didn't want to be at school. Like I, you know, I think the other kids could tell there was something wrong with me mm -hmm. because I was constantly like, um, you know, if there was any kind of group thing, I was always like, off to the side or like something was happening with me. I was either like talking to the teachers, like trying to mm -hmm. get out of it and go home. Mm -hmm. Or I just like um, was having a really bad time with like panic attacks and stuff like that. Um, it's such a young age. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I do like I'd had, I, thinking back, I definitely had things that like resemble like high anxiety and like panic before that, mm -hmm. like before 11. But 11 was when I started having panic attacks and then I like knew that that was what was happening to me. Um, whereas I guess I didn't really know before um, like what was happening. Um, and yeah, and then it sort of like was get better. Like I'd just go through phases where I'd be like, okay for a bit and then it would be bad again. Um, and I'd like take a little bit of time out of school and stuff, not like loads and loads, but like a couple of weeks here and there. Um, and then when I was maybe like, 15 or 16 there was like a new development in my anxiety which i've never really like had before and just sort of developed like without me even kind of noticing um and i started to suffer really bad with ocd and i would do all these like compulsions and stuff like that um and i didn't really pay any attention to it in terms of it being something bad. It was just something that I did. Mm -hmm. um, something that just like happened, like just yeah. something that you live with. Yeah, right exactly. Now. And it just was like, I didn't think that it was a problem really. Um, it was just like, uh, I don't know, like just the way my brain worked, I think. And then I would do these things to like cope with the way, the mm -hmm. way my brain worked. Um, and then when I was about, I think, 17 i and i don't really know even what triggered it necessarily um but my sort of panic anxiety sort of came back but like worse than i'd ever had it before and um i basically couldn't I stopped leaving my house. I couldn't, I dropped out of school. Um, I was doing my A-levels at the time. I think I just finished my first year of A-levels. Um, and then I, um, it, it was like the summer after, I think where it really started happening. I was getting like panic attacks all the time. And I, um, like I couldn't leave my house. Every time I sort of left my house, I just felt like I was about to die. Um, and, because of that I was also struggling with um, eating so I like lost loads of weight and I was just like getting quite sick um, because of it and then I sort of tried to go back to school for my last year but then I just wasn't well enough so I ended up dropping out um, and uh, then I slowly slowly started to to get a little bit better um and 
And then I tried school again the next year. I went and like asked if I could try and do the year again to finish my A-levels. Um, and I did one term and then I suddenly the OCD side came back and it like something kind of snapped in my brain and I just had a complete like mental breakdown and I was at home all the time like my dad had to stay home from work to to be with me when my mum couldn't be there because I just couldn't function I was just like constantly crying and just a complete like wreck I couldn't function um and that was I'd done like I'd been to see some people like throughout my teenage years and like a bit younger as well for my anxiety but like nothing really like clicked mm -hmm. that well for me I'd like tried all the kind of like therapies that are out there um and then and then I had this big mental breakdown and that's when we found a therapist that was like OCD specific because at that time I didn't know that that's what I had um and I just thought that I was insane um and then we found this person for me to see and that was kind of like the first step in um in me like getting back to a place where like I felt okay and I could function and then like I could actually maybe think about doing what I wanted to do mm -hmm. in life which was acting because for me with when I had like my OCD is about being a good person and obsessing about things that would make me a bad person mm -hmm. and then so there was a long time in my teenagers where I felt like I was the worst person in the world and I fully believed it and the thought of being in front of someone and performing and and also knowing what was going on inside my head was like it gave me such a massive amount of guilt that I was like I can't wow. um I don't want to do that because I don't deserve to be like looked at I don't deserve to be you know uh mm. I don't that's like not something that can happen and mm. um, but obviously then I went, I was 19, I had this mental breakdown, I started seeing a therapist who actually taught me about OCD for the first time mm -hmm. because... It was still in Jersey, yeah? Yeah, um, because up until that point I didn't really know that that could be OCD because you just think of it as like, you know, more got to do with like germs and stuff like that. Like that's, I mm -hmm. guess, the mainstream idea of what yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, I have that a tiny bit, but not. I I would say that that's not even like necessarily properly my OCD. That's mm -hmm. just like normal not liking germs, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but not even in an extreme way. There's so many other people that like them way less than yeah. me. <laughs> um, uh, so that was a big like turning point for me because I then learned that I'm not crazy mm -hmm. um, and that what I'm experiencing is something that loads of other people have experienced and it's not actually me as a person and it's this thing that's happening that, that has developed because of anxiety and blah blah blah. I can't even imagine to be fair like what kind of uh, relief it must be to realize mm. something like that when you think that something is very very wrong with you and you're the only one like that. It's, yeah definitely it's... because you feel like before you know that you feel like your life was over that's what I felt I didn't see any future from myself because I felt like my life was over and um, I couldn't like all I could do was just no, I couldn't function like I couldn't see life moving past where I was mm -hmm. um, and then you go to uh, someone and you learn about this thing and it's suddenly like oh my god my life isn't over like mm -hmm. I you know I can still move on from here um, which is a great feeling mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's hard like it takes a long time to um, to get back from that mm -hmm. place but um, I, you know, I started seeing her in Jersey and then I moved over to London sort of by accident um, because of my anxiety as well, because I came over here um, to visit my boyfriend at the time. And then 
I, my anxiety was so bad that I couldn't get, do the traveling back to Jersey. And then I was kind of like, at that time I was kind of toying with the idea of moving over here anyway and going and doing this music course, because mm -hmm. I was still like thinking like, oh, acting, I can't do it. Um, but then I couldn't get back to Jersey because my anxiety was so bad, I just couldn't, I didn't want to get on the plane, like I um, couldn't do it. So then I ended up staying here and that's how I moved here, basically. <laughs> um, but then I, so the, the therapist that I was seeing in Jersey referred me to someone over here mm -hmm. and that was my therapist that I saw for like a good, maybe two, two years I think of going like every week. Mm -hmm. um, and then it sort of like trickled off after that. Um, and yeah, it was a long road of like trying, of like getting to a point where I can like live with mm -hmm. it now. Um, and it's just very much in the the background most of the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it like flares up and I feel like, oh, I'm a bit like consumed by it again. But I know that it's, not that's not gonna last and you, do, do you know how to kind of yeah. deal with it mentally, yeah right? yeah i know how to deal with it and even if i'm not dealing with it well i'm i because i know so much about it now it's like it's not the same as it was i can't be like completely sucked in because there's still that element of me that really knows mm -hmm. exactly what it is yeah um uh and so as i was getting better with all that stuff then I got to a point where I was like, oh, I I feel like free and like myself again to a point where I can actually consider doing what I want to do with my life, which is acting. Um, yeah, so I chucked music production out the window um, and decided to give it a go, Yeah, basically. Well, I'm, I'm glad that that story ended like this. Yeah, it's <laughs> a happy glad, ending. I'm glad that you, yeah, you, you found the right purpose and like you figure out what's happening. Uh, what would be your advice if someone listens to this, who mm. has like going through the same thing? What would be your advice? I mean, I would definitely say like, yeah, going to therapy saved me for sure. Um, I, my personal like journey with it is that I started going to therapy and then like I was struggling to um, take in the information because I was so in such a bad place mentally. Um, so then I ended up going on medication as well to get me out of my, for like my dark space. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then for me it was the combination of that and then going to therapy that helped me get out of it and now i'm off my medication and i just go to therapy like as and when i need it um but yeah definitely i think the most important thing is to talk like really try and push yourself to talk to someone without worrying what they'll think mm -hmm. um whether that be like someone that you trust but like like as a friend or um you know a professional i would definitely suggest um because you don't always know like how like unless you know the person really well you don't always know how someone's going to react mm -hmm. to to what you're going to say um but for me like the biggest part was that i had a lot of shame about um, speaking to someone because I didn't think that it was, I didn't know that it was normal. Mm -hmm. And I thought that there was something very, very wrong mm -hmm. in my head. Um, and my advice would just be, even if you think that, and you think that you're gonna say something and, and someone's gonna like shame you for it, do it anyway, because they won't. Yeah, I don't. And if they do, then that's, then that's, that, not, that's, that's their a, problem. That's not a person that's that not, you want in your life. Yeah, that's not family. a person you want in your life, and that's their problem, and it's not anything hmm. bad got to do with yeah. you. So yes, seek help because I sought help yeah. finally, <laughs> and then 
I got help and now I can live a normal life where I thought, I really, really thought, and I can't stress enough for like anyone who is in that situation, I did not think that I could survive any of this, but I did. And so if you don't think you can survive, like if even if you're convinced that you can't, it's possible. You can. Just talk to someone. Talk to someone. Talk you you have people who love you. Mm. Probably most of the time it's parents. They will do so many things yes, for you. Yes, they will. So talk to someone. Yeah, for sure.